Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, I think we've about got my crescent angle bandsaw all finished up. And I wanted to show you guys, take you on a little tour of it and show you the finished product. I say finished, it's still got a couple of little small details on it. Um, one of which being it needs to have a guard put over on this uh, front blade here. I need to fabricate or uh, have a casting made for that. A uh, little bit of fine tuning and adjusting some things along those lines. but. By and large, this machine is complete, and uh, I wanted to take some time and share it with you guys. So before we get into it too much, I, I do want to share a little bit about the history of this machine that I know of. I acquired this machine back in 2007. Uh, I found it for sale. It was uh, up in Pennsylvania. A gentleman had purchased it from a coffin factory, a factory that made coffins and uh, it had been there probably since it was purchased new. And this machine, I estimate, to have been made between about 1915 and 1920. Uh, that's based on serial number as well as uh, just some features on this machine and some changes that were made along the way. We don't have a very good uh, index of older Crescent machines as far as serial numbers go. Uh, but we can make some estimations based off of them. So uh, I went and picked it up. I actually, a guy brought it down to North Carolina, left it with a friend of mine. I drove up to North Carolina, picked it up a little bit later, brought it back to Tifton, Georgia, where I'm at. And this machine has literally been in storage in my, around my shop. Uh, it was in a storage building for a while uh, since 2007, awaiting restoration. I finally got around to it this summer getting started on this. And uh, I, I do want to mention, if you've seen my earlier videos talking about some of the stuff we've done to restore this, I do want to mention Miles McDonald. He is a college student who helped me out this summer uh, when he was out of school. He did a lot of the work on this. And I'm just going to give credit where credit is due. He stripped off the paint, did the body work, uh, started getting it painted. Um, he had to go back to school before it was finished, so I kind of finished it up. But he did most of the grunt work on it. And that, I'm just being honest there. Uh, and I kind of did the finishing touches on it uh, after he had already gone back to school. Uh, I got it running, uh, but before I show you that, a couple of really cool things about this saw that uh, I want to show you. So a couple of quick things about this saw. First off, it has 36 inch wheels on it. So it's 36 inches in diameter, three feet uh, which means that you can cut something that has up to three feet in the throat. You can cut a circle on this six feet in diameter. It's a pretty good size bandsaw. Uh, they did make larger bandsaws than 36 inches, uh, but when you got above 36 inches, you pretty much had to have the wheel drop down below the floor level or the table would be so high uh, that you couldn't do it. So in a shop, if you had a concrete floor, you'd have to put it up on risers and probably build a platform around it to work on. Uh, but they did. They made uh, these bandsaws in 38 inches, 42 inches on up in size. Uh, but 36 inch bandsaw is a pretty good size bandsaw. Uh, this uh, bandsaw here, Crescent Machine Company, uh, was one of the things that they're probably best known for is their bandsaws. They started making bandsaws in the late 1800s. Uh, by the early 1900s, you know, somewhere along there between 1900 and 1910, they really kind of got their design down pat. They had a lot of patents on them uh, that were unique to the Crescent bandsaws. Around 1905, pa uh, Crescent patented this particular style of bandsaw, which is a unique style. They called this an angle bandsaw. Uh, some people would have called this a ship saw. And uh, what makes this machine so unique is this hand wheel on the front and that the whole backside of this will tilt backwards to 45 degrees and it's uh, ex extremely smooth. I just turned this crank, there's a counterbalance and there's springs and weights inside of this casting that allow this to just tilt back. And the entire back of the saw will tilt back to 45 degrees. And that is for cutting an angle here. You can cut very precise angles this way without having to tilt the table or build a jig. You can even change the angle while you're sawing. Uh, you can have a person that is over here cranking on it. You can have a piece of wood that's marked if you want different angles. There is a scale up down here on the front uh, that you can read and tell what the angle is. And as you're cutting through the piece of wood, you can actually tilt it. They called these ship saws because they were used in the construction of wooden ships. Uh, on the hulls and the 
uh, of a ship, there's all kinds of weird angles that have to be cut, and a, a saw like this would have been used for it. Now, typically, what I would consider to be a true ship saw is a much larger saw than this, and usually a true ship saw would actually tilt towards you as well as away from you. This one, I think, will tilt five degrees toward me, but uh, and then 45 degrees away from me. Uh, this particular model, while I'm sure that there were people that used them in the shipyards, uh, it was really designed more for woodworking factories, furniture factories, uh, places like that. And, and like I mentioned earlier, this particular one came out of a coffin factory where they were probably making some of those odd cuts to make on these uh, coffins uh, to get those angles on the, that you commonly see on the decorative uh, coffins. While Crescent did make quite a few of these angle bandsaws, they are relatively rare uh, to this day. They're, they're out there, they can be found. I found this one, I was looking for one for a long time. This is actually the third 36 inch Crescent bandsaw I have restored. Uh, one of them is at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. I had restored one for myself before that, um, before I got this one that was just a standard, you know, 90 degree uh, saw, and then when I got this one, I actually sold the one that I had restored with the hopes of getting this one restored. It just took me a while to get it all done. I want to just briefly mention again that when we did this, we put this metal frame down right at the bottom that this whole machine sits down in. I did a video when I did this actually with my uh, nephew, uh, Ren Harden, came up. We did some welding and welded this thing together, and I showed it pretty well then. Uh, but I did want to show it kind of again here how we did this. This is actually designed that I came up with when I restored my, one of my first Crescent bandsaws uh, so that I could attach a motor to it and do it. Originally, this machine would have been powered by an overhead line shaft. It was not originally uh, uh, motor powered when it was new. So uh, this frame on the bottom, it, it allows me to put a motor mount in here that's attached to it without having to do any drilling or anything into the saw itself or come up with some kind of crazy mount. Um, I had a, I think that's a five, yes, a five horsepower, three phase motor that we put on this. Uh, I had to come up with a motor starter and I want to thank Eric Keen, uh, who actually uh, had a motor starter and he sent it to me and uh, we, had, we basically put it on here. I had to do some wiring uh, to get it all done, figure out how to do that. My buddy Stan Zinkowski kind of helped me, set me straight on how to get all the wiring done properly on it. Uh, and We've got it all hooked up, it's now working. And, uh, but this, this design down here with the, the motor built into this frame really works well. And I've got leveling feet up underneath it too so I can adjust it to get the machine level and have all the feet where the machine's not rocking uh, on an uneven concrete floor. One thing I wanna show you is a decal that we put on the machine. This was actually made by Ryan Sellers uh, who makes uh, these water slide decals reproductions. Uh, when I got my, my machine, it had this decal that was on here. This decal, it had been documented on other Crescent machines from this era. Uh, it was a fairly common thing to have that decal put on them. Uh, and when I got my machine, it had the original paint on it. The original paint was in poor condition, but it did still have the original paint. And you could still see the decal. I started to not repaint this machine because I just really like that decal there. Even though it was in rough shape, it was hard to see it. It was damaged, but it was there. And uh, I really wanted to preserve that. Uh, but at the end of the day, the paint job was just so bad that I just didn't really feel like I could preserve it and make the machine really work, look very good. So I went ahead and stripped it off, but I got up with Ryan and he was actually able to create the uh, reproduction decal. And uh, I put this on the machine today. I think it looks awesome and really kind of makes this restoration just kind of pop in my opinion, having that back on there. Big thank you to Ryan for working with me on that. Uh, he took some artwork that was actually already done in this case and he was just able to create the decal for me and send it to me. If you're interested in uh, having decals done for any of your restorations, uh, best way to get a hold of Ryan Sellers is to look him up on Facebook or Instagram and um, he's got pages there showing a lot of his, his uh, artwork and decals that he's done. And uh, he can, you can work with him and see if, if he can do something for you. 
So this saw is probably an OSHA nightmare. I realize that, and I accept that, and I accept the uh, responsibility and risk of working around a machine like this uh, with the open wheels on it. Uh, originally, the machine, that, about the only guarding on here was it had a piece of metal back here in the back that ran up and down. And this will kind of prevent you, you, you will run into that before you run into the blade coming down here. Uh, it's still a little bit exposed, but it's better than just being totally exposed uh, like it would have been. And this is pretty much just like it was in the original catalog uh, drawings. Now I had the, the angle brackets were on here. This piece was not miss, was missing. I just fabricated it out of a piece of steel. And like I mentioned before, there is a guard that kind of comes and wraps over the front here that allows, it moves up and down when you adjust the, uh, uh, the guides up and down. Uh, there's a piece that goes on the top up here. There's a casting that fits over this boss that comes out. You got a bracket here, there's another bracket up here. It's basically just kind of a little angle piece that comes over it. I've still got to fabricate that, um, but I will get that done fairly soon. The biggest thing is, is I need to, I could fabricate one, but I think I'm gonna make a casting uh, to kind of copy the original piece that goes up on top there, just to try to keep the saw as original as possible. Uh, the, the wheels themselves, uh, Later saws did have guards on them. Actually, uh, when this saw was made, or toward the late 18 or 19 teens, Crescent did offer as an option some uh, guards for these wheels. It was not a standard uh, thing until much later. I think by the time the 30s rolled around, they pretty much had totally enclosed guards on them. But when this saw made, it was very common for it to be shipped without any guards on the wheels at all. Um, and again, yes, is it dangerous? Potentially, if you're not careful, um, I've worked around saws like this most of my life. I'm comfortable working around them. I'm also very aware of them and very cautious around them, make sure I don't get anything uh, into them. And uh, again, that's a, that is a risk that I am willing to take and uh, I will take responsibility if anything happens. So let's try her out. I'm gonna hit the power button. Fires right up and uh, got a brand new blade on here. Cuts like butter. Let's see if we can just kind of rip down through here. I think she works pretty good. I think I'm gonna tilt it back and uh, try it in angle mode. I've never used a bandsaw like this before. I've never had an angle bandsaw to use, so I'm kind of curious to see how this will work. We'll go back to around 45 degrees and cut something on it. We got her tilted back to 45 degrees. Uh, let's see how she does. We got a four by four block here. We're just gonna run through here. Pretty neat, <laughs> pretty neat. Well, 
there you go. Angle bandsaw, something kind of unique. Glad to have this over here on the woodworking side of the shop. Uh, you know, when I do traditional pattern making uh, with wood patterns, which I still do occasionally, a saw like this is just going to really be extremely valuable to me uh, and kind of give me a lot of versatility that I have not had in the past. And saws like this were commonly found in pattern maker shops uh, because of the unique things that you can do with one and the unique things that you often need to do when making wooden patterns. So uh, that was really kind of my biggest interest in getting it. And uh, glad to have it in here, glad to finally have it restored after all these years. One more list or one more machine checked off the list as far as being functional. And uh, now that I've got this one going, I'm probably going to get rid of my little 14 inch jet band saw over there that I've been using kind of as a stop gap uh, and while I've been waiting to get this one going. But now that I've got this, I just don't need that little band saw anymore. So there you go, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. A little introduction to the Crescent Angle Bandsaw, a very unique machine, a uh, very rare machine, and one that I'm glad to have in my shop. And with that, guys, that will be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are appreciated. And guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.